Welcome back to BCIT Magazine. Chandler Grieve now joins us with a look at this week's sports. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Hard to believe that this past Monday marked the one-year anniversary of that now famous Olympic hockey thriller between Canada and the U.S. that, of course, Sidney Crosby won with that now famous goal. Do you guys remember where you were when that goal went in? Absolutely. I was in the middle of it all downtown uh, at a coffee shop on Burrard Street. Uh, and after Sydney scored, we all spilled out into the streets and the mayhem began. <laughs> Definitely mayhem. That's a good word to describe it. Great memories for sure. I was at my favorite local watering hole on Broadway and I'm still nursing an ankle injury from those post-goal celebrations. And with that in mind, I went to the place where the big game happened to see how people were reminiscing about Canada's golden goal. Some celebrated the one-year anniversary Monday with a game outside the rink where it all happened. They even convinced the hero himself to stop by. Came in off the left side. Others didn't even need sticks. Underneath, uh, I think it was Ryan Miller's leg. So. And he went like this. And then he came up off the glass. <laughs> And inside Rogers Arena, a special exhibit unveiled where fans can now remember the golden goal. Up with it again. He's on the ice with Aginla. Aginla scoping. Sidney Crosby, the golden goal. And Canada has once in a lifetime Olympic gold. And the man who had one of the best seats in the house for the moment stopped by to share his memories of February 28, 2010. Obviously, you know, a lot of people uh, talk to me about it uh, everywhere I go, especially in Canada, uh, you know, about the game, uh, you know, thanking, uh, you know, myself and my teammates for, uh, for winning the gold and, and bringing it back. It seems, uh, can't believe a year's been gone already. It's, it's crazy how fast uh, it's, it's been gone, but uh, the memory's still fresh, so that's a good thing. The intersection of Granville and Robson was a tad less busy than a year ago when thousands spilled onto the streets. However, the memory of the moment hasn't faded with time. People were standing on chairs and the security guys were trying to, you know, get people to calm down, but it wasn't going to happen. I mean, and then it just spilled out of the building and uh, just a uh, fun time to remember. Yeah, I thought we were done. What? Cross, we came through. I was scared because it was 50-50. Uh, my heart was just stopped. Like, as soon as the Americans scored and it went to overtime, I was like, oh, man, I don't know what's happening here. I couldn't sit down at all. But as soon as Crosby did it, it's just like, wow. I... <laughs> Many people can't remember what they had for breakfast yesterday, but when it comes to Canada's game and goal, it seems like everyone's memory is just fine. Chandler Grieve in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Oh, hearing that goal still brings back goosebumps. What a moment and what a game for Canada. And speaking of good games, Saturday at War Memorial Gym up on the UBC campus, there was quite the matchup of volleyball powerhouses in the Canada West Championship with a game featuring a player that is becoming somewhat of a hero of her own for the UBC Thunderbirds. She has emerged as the face of her team a team that knows a thing or two about winning, including three straight national championships. Power, emotion, and precision serving. Standing at six feet tall and oozing with athleticism, Shanice Marcel is the total volleyball package, and the sport has taken notice. During this past regular season, number eight in blue and white has led UBC to a number one national ranking gaining a following and recognition as the top player in the Canada West. It's pretty amazing. I mean, I didn't expect to win the MVP award, so that's quite an honor. I hoped for it, but never actually thought it would happen in my third year. I've been playing since grade five, played a lot of beach, which helps with the indoor game. Just have to work on every skill. Skills that were on display Saturday night in the Canada West Championship match as our Thunderbirds were in the midst of a five-set thriller with their crosstown rivals from Trinity Western, with fans making deafening noise. Let's go Demons! Let's go Demons! And our head coach counting on her. Darts here. Darts here and the feeling we're getting some points. One, two, three. And the score tied at 15s in the final set. She delivered not just one perfectly placed serve under pressure, but two. To help her T-Birds claim their third straight conference title. 
the end of the match, she goes back after making a mistake, attacking wise, and serves rockets. And the team feeds off her, her good play and her steadiness. So this is great leadership development for Shanice. Having conquered all that Western Canada has to offer, Marcel and her team will now try and write their final chapter when they travel to Laval for the national championship starting on March 4th. Chandler Grieve in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. Yeah, good story there about a tremendous athlete and obviously best of luck to the UBC Thunderbirds at Nationals. Now, Nationals seem pretty intense, but thankfully it'll be over by Easter and they can reward themselves with chocolates. Ah, uh, chocolates. I hear you've been rewarding yourself early this year, Ellie. It's true, Ben. With this Coco Crazy holiday just around the corner, one of the biggest names in Canadian chocolates is in high gear. With preparations, and I was able to get a sneak peek and taste behind the purple doors of the Purdy's factory. Easter is over a month and a half away, but Vancouver-based Purdy's Chocolates is already deep in preparation for this chocolatey holiday. And although it's a busy time of year, those who work at Purdy say it's also a rewarding time of year. It's incredibly busy, but you see the smiles on our customers' face when they're buying Easter, Easter chocolates. There's nothing better than that. It's fantastic to see. And the joy of chocolates at Purdy's is something you can see all year round, not just at Easter. Uh, the smell, the feeling, uh, the smiles of people as they eat it. Uh, you know, even our factory staff, nobody ever gets tired of it. They always sample on the line. There's something magical about chocolate. I mean, we can talk about the technical and the artistic. It's a magic food. Uh, it's the most uh, craved food in the world. And when you eat chocolate, it makes you feel great. And that great feeling all starts inside this building where the chocolates are made. Purdy's invited us to get a behind the scenes look inside their factory. Let's go check it out. This mix will soon become the center of one of Purdy's top sellers, the English toffee. But before it gets to this eatable stage, it must first be poured. Cut. And cooled. Now after it's done cooling, they coat it in milk chocolate and then dust it with freshly roasted almonds. This is by far one of my favorites. And being such a chocolate enthusiast myself, I couldn't pass up a lesson with Purdy's head chocolatier. Okay. So today we're going to make something completely new. It's going to be a pear and cinnamon truffle. I'm very excited to learn how to make this and hopefully I don't mess up too much. And with that, we're off, filling up some milk chocolate molds with truffley goodness. But of course, my amateur hands weren't quick enough and the pro had to take over and finish things off. Okay. And then it was time for a taste test. And even though it's not quite Easter yet, I got my cocoa fix and Gary got a guinea pig for a new creation. Very nice. Ellie Short in Vancouver for BCIT Magazine. If you have any questions or comments regarding this program, please visit us online at bcitbroadcastnews.ca or bcit-broadcast.com. That's it for us this week. I'm Ellie Short with Ben Milger and Chandler Grieve. Thanks for watching. And we now leave you with a look at how Vancouver wildlife is faring with this wintry weather we've been having.